Hey, what's going on miners? Today we're gonna to be checking out how to actually trunk VLANs into Proxmox. So let's get right into it. I know I'm not showing my, my camera and stuff like that. So I am working on redesigning the whole studio. So some of these uh, videos for the next few weeks are gonna be something kind of like this where I'm just doing a screen share. So it's gonna be kind of a different style. It's gonna be like a Panda style here until I get kind of the studio all situated. I'll, I'll take some screenshots and some little bit of video. I'll just, uh, you know, maybe record kind of what I'm going through and the changing around my studio and stuff. But today we're talking about how to trunk VLANs into Proxmox and why this is really important for us as miners. So one one of the great things that, that Proxmox, that you can do in Proxmox is actually trunk VLANs into Proxmox. And this is great because you can have the actual Proxmox hypervisor on one subnet, like a subnet that you would manage from home. You know what I mean? Maybe it's on the 172 network or the 10.10 .10 or 192, whatever your home network is. Now you can actually use VLANs and then be able to have the subnet of your VMs be on a totally different subnet than your Proxmox. And this way you don't have to worry about when you do spawn VMs inside of Proxmox. Um, because if you don't trunk it in this way and you just leave the, the actual VMs on the same subnet as Proxmox, if it's on your home network, you are leaving yourself vulnerable. So this is a great tool to be able to you know, separate and segregate some of our traffic on our network with VLAN tagging and, how, and understanding access and trunking. So we are gonna be using Proxmox. This is a free hypervisor tool. Um, you don't have to pay for it, so it's great. I recommend everybody, you know, try this out. It's free to download and put on any kind of system, whether it's AMD or old Xeon servers or whatever, old Dell Optiplexes, man. I suggest that everybody just kind of play around and get to know Proxmox a little bit because this is one of the great tools for miners is to be able to create VMs to be able to hold our core wallets and other things like that and nodes. Let's get into some of the uses you know, you know, uh, why would we want to trunk our VLANs, right? Some of you guys may be familiar with, with Flux, and um, you guys might be running Flux nodes at home. And, you know, running anything at home and opening ports to the open world always creates network vulnerabilities, right? So this could be a great way for you guys to be able to create Flux nodes while also keeping them trunked on different VLANs and be able to separate your network. And this way using a hypervisor really kind of keeps it organized. So another uh, great instance is in case you're getting into Vast AI or maybe TensorDoc or any of these other, other platforms, if you're getting on a platform that you're not sure about, you definitely wanna be putting in, you know, things on, on VLANs and separating out your network. You don't wanna leave yourself vulnerable, especially at home. It only takes one intrusion to get into your network and then you, it's just gonna be a total nightmare for you guys. So these are just some of the use cases that you guys may want to use um, VLANs for. So um, now today we're only gonna be talking about how to actually trunk the port into Proxmox and how to get the actual VLAN to come onto our, our VM so that way it's separate from the actual uh, Proxmox IP address. So let me get into this and how we're gonna do it now. As you can see up here, we're on the 10.10.4.1 .10 you know, network here. This is 10.10.4.12. This is my Proxmox cluster at home. These are my three uh, one new servers. And then, then this one down here is, is my big boy server, right? It has a, you know, 56 uh, threads. So these are all, you know, Dell servers and stuff like that, right? But this is this is the network that all of these are on. They're on the 10.10.4.1 network, right? Now, I did already do this um, just, to, just to show you guys. I did create this VM. It's just, I just put a bunch of random letters, you know, numbers in there or whatever. If we come over to the console here, and then you can see down here that the IP address is 10.10.3.13. So we're on a totally different network than our 10.10.4 network, which is great because this way, this traffic from this VM isn't gonna be able to talk to our Proxmox, right? It's actually a really good tool and a really good way to be able to do this. 
So here, I'm trying to ping the gateway right here, and it's 10.10.4.1, which is the gateway for Proxmox, right? Now, I have specifically told my Draytech to not allow traffic crosstalk between VLANs, right? So it doesn't even know that this subnet that the actual Proxmox lives on, right? Because we're on 10.10.4, and the VM is on 10.10.3, right? So let's get into... What, what type of things you're actually going to need to be able to get this actual function to be able to get working? Number one, you're going to need a router. You're not, most likely, your ISP routers and stuff like that aren't going to be able to do this. You are going to need a standalone router. Um, I don't know about ASUS and TP-Link and all those guys. I do know about Draytech, Microtech, and Ubiquity. They support these kinds of features, right? So you're definitely going to need a router as well as you are going to need a managed switch a layer two or layer three switch because the reason we have to have managed is this way we can tag and untag our actual traffic so tagging means that we're trunking which means that we're passing the vlan to the next spot and setting setting the vlan to access is giving um is giving it, it, the access is like the endpoint for the user which would be like this proxmox server right on 10.10.4.12 this is an access mode right so that's the difference between trunking and access okay now we need switches and routers that support these features i'm assuming you guys have that kind of thing so i'm going to go into my so we're over here at my draytech and we are looking at the tagged and untagged VLANs, right? And I know the PVID numbers are horrible. I made this like a couple years ago, so it's bad. I know. You shouldn't use ones and twos. You should use like tens and twenties. I'm I'm awful at that, right? So now what you need to do is just come in come into your switch. And the ports I'm using for two of my servers is 18 and 20. I have the PVID is three. Right, because that's the actual untagged VLAN that I'm actually trying to use. And then for my tagging, which are when you tag a VLAN, that means it's going to trunk. That means it won't get picked up by DHCP or anything like that. So we want to trunk our uh, our VLAN traffic into Proxmox, right? So VLAN we are tagging is one and two. And then untagging, giving it the access point, which gives it the 10.10.4 network, is, is VLAN tag 3. That, that's why it's untagged, right? So you want to tag the VLAN that you want to pass through to Proxmox. You want to keep it tagged, right? So once you've done that, okay, you're going to come over to the actual server here. And then you're going to go into the network settings. And then you're going to find um, your Ethernet controller. Um, so, and that's, and that's going to depend, right? So, you know, uh, usually it's going to be the default is going to be VMBR0, which is your Linux bridge. And you're going to, it's going to be off by default. You're going to want to enable this. So what I'll do is, is I'll come over here to one of my other servers. And we are going to practice on it, right? So we have network, VMBR zero. As you see, we don't have, we're gonna make it VLAN aware. We're going to click okay. And then you're gonna see this pop up down here, which is fine. This is adding the configurations for all the VLANs and making them VLAN aware. You're then going to click apply configuration. So this way it's applied to the actual virtual bridge. And then it'll do that, and then it's set. So now when you get to here on the network actual section here, now you need to add your VLAN tag of what you're trying to do, right? So my VLAN tag to get on 10.10.3 is VLAN tag two, right? I'm going to add my VLAN tag right here, right? And then we're gonna click, yep, finish. We're going to wait for this to spawn. So we're over here at the network connections, and as you can see, it's pulling the, the address of 10.10.3.14, right? So we have successfully trunked the port into Proxmox, and then on the network 
side of our server, we made it VLAN aware so that way it knows that VLAN tag two exists, right? And then we could, and then we put the actual VLAN tag on the VM itself because essentially now when you put the VLAN tag on the VM, you're essentially putting the um, the VLAN in access mode, which gives it the DHCP, right? If you have DHCP server up. If you didn't have DHCP up, this is where you would go up here and then you would manually enter, you would go to edit IPv4 and then you would change it to manual and then you would do a manual configuration of your IP address. Um, so if you wanna do static routing, which I don't suggest static routing because it can get very it can get very tough after a while. So I suggest just if you're new to this, I suggest this using DHCP uh, to make things easier on yourself. So um, there and there you guys go. And you know what? I'll finish this and I'll actually take this. All right, guys, we are booting back up into Ubuntu. So. Let's go ahead and we're going to see exactly. I already seen the 10.3 gateway kind of appear there for a second. But we're going to log in. All right. Now you can see right here that it says 10.3.14, right? So we're on the different subnet because the subnet is right here is on this three. Proxmox is on four. We're on three. So we're on a totally different subnet here. Let's go ahead. Let's try to ping 1.1.1.1. We ping out to the outside world. Oh, we sure can, right? We could definitely ping to the outside world. Now, is it possible? Are we able to actually ping the actual other gateway that we don't want to be talking to, right? Because we don't want to talk to 10.4, right? No, we cannot talk to 10.4. There you go, guys. There you have it. That is how you trunk VLANs into proxmox this way we can really separate our network here right we can keep all of our machines like our actual hypervisor on a management subnet or your home subnet whatever you want to do with it and then we could trunk other vlans down into proxmox and keep things off of our network right this would be great for flux nodes vast rigs uh master nodes whatever you guys want to do any kind of servers or things you want to open up to the outside world this is what you guys want to do to kind of protect yourselves right because now it's on a completely different network than your home network all right guys let me know what you guys think down below if you guys like the video or not i was trying to do some more networking stuff because i know some people have been asking for it so this is just one way on, on how to actually separate your network so that way we can keep core wallets and other things from, you know, all this nefarious stuff from getting on our home networks, all right? So this is the Mighty King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.